I'm Dan Drake. This is Front Up on Geno TV and Channel 99. Our guest today is Neil Cocker. Welcome, Neil. Hey, Dan. Nice to doing? have you here. Uh, Neil is a one of the uh, scallopers, the commercial scallopers here in Nantucket, and we thought it'd be good to talk a little bit about what's going on this season and how 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 is the season so far shaping up so far, and and then we can talk about why it's different from last year, maybe. Well. Uh, it's been a pretty good season so far. Uh, the commercial guys had a lot of fun the first couple of weeks. I think they're still doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. I'm fishing Madiket mostly, and mm -hmm. there's plenty of stock out there. Not very big, but uh, I've been told that in town it's pretty good, mm -hmm. um, and the stock's looking pretty nice compared to last year where it was suffering a little bit. From Is the fleet smaller this year? I think the fleet is smaller. Um, I'm hearing about 14 boats on both sides. Mm -hmm. And um, Is this in part because last year was a bad year and people didn't want to spend the money for the license again, do you think? I'm not or really sure. Or because of the, uh, the uh, Children's Beach boat ramp being closed? or <laughs> um, I don't think it uh, has any much to do with the ramp being closed, but um, because last year was pretty weak in town uh, from the get-go, uh, most people thought, well, I'm not going to bother. Um, they didn't get to see the amount of seed that was turning up at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And it survived this year, which is unlike last year, because there was a fair amount of seed and adults in the mix last year, but their growth stopped right at the end. Mm -hmm. And um, then some of them died in the shell, so mm -hmm. we were getting a lot of closed shell right. um, duds. Um, so I, I think all in all it's been good. The recreational season was great. People finally found where the larger ones were. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's a lot of really small, small adults in Madiket because it was sort of overcrowded with seed, I think, and they didn't have the opportunity to grow, but most everybody's saving that till the end of the season. Mm -hmm. um, what are the, I mean, last year there was an algae bloom yep. in, at the end of August, early September, which was credited with killing off a substantial part of the crop here in the main harbor. That's right. And that did not occur this year? It only came for a moment in time, um, and the oyster guys are aware of when it comes and goes because it also affects the uh, growth of the oyster. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were anticipating that it was going to come back this year, but because of water temperatures being... Slightly cooler, maybe? Slightly cooler. Uh, it helped with the uh, with the non-blooming of the algae. Mm -hmm. And so their oysters came along fine, and then the crop of scallops that was out there came along fine, too. So the seed actually survived better. Um, did the town put much seed in last year? I don't think there was a lot of seed put in last year because the hatchery was offline. Right. And um, so this was this is all a, pretty much a natural crop this year. It's a na it, it's possibly a natural crop, but it may be a generation, yeah. you know, down the road from when Tara was uh, mm -hmm. putting a lot of scallops in there. We don't often think we're going to catch what we put in as far as uh, immature stuff, but we're putting in large quantity, or Tara's been putting in large quantities now, in the hopes that they will take and they will generate seed for years down the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can put, I think she said one year, she put in 70 to 100 million. Right. And um, we don't know that that, we, we don't know if we were catching what she put in or the their progeny. Set, yeah. yeah. So. Um, what are some of the other threats to the scallop? Well, I'm told the green crab is a big problem. Um, Do you have green crab in Madigan? Yep. And uh, Carl's been, Carl Sherlin's been trapping them. Uh, we don't know for sure how many they devour on a daily basis, but we're catching them in, mixed in with the scallops, so we know they're uh, predating. And there are a lot around. There seem to be a lot around. A couple other types of crabs are around mm -hmm. too, as well. That, um, I think are. But don't the green crabs also dig up the eelgrass? In effect, I do not know 
Uh, I've been told that they are vegetarians or they dig it up, but I, I don't know much about that mm. part of it. I think they're mostly carnivorous. But I heard that they somehow managed to uproot them. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know much about that. Mm -hmm. I, like I say, I've been told that they uh, raise heck with the uh, with the green there's grass. All, there's, been, the there's been concern grass. over the years about the eelgrass in in Nantucket Harbor, but is the concern as as serious about the eelgrass in Madiket Harbor? No, it, there seems to be better growing conditions in Madiket for the eelgrass. There was some that was five to six feet long. It's still pretty long at Tucker Nook. Mm -hmm. Um, and I heard that it started to reestablish in town a little bit this year. Um, I, uh, I think the theory is that if the algae, the algaes that deny eelgrass light are the ones that um, prevent the eelgrass from rooting, it's not the scallopers that are uh, ripping it out, it's the... Well, it's the matting of the algae when it dies, right, exactly. on top of the eelgrass. Yeah, it's a, I think the technical term is eutrophication. Mm -hmm. As the algae dies down, it blocks the light, and eelgrass requires a huge amount of light to grow. It's one of the fastest growing aquatic plants there is, but mm -hmm. it has to have that light and oxygen. Um, one of the things that's been said is that there are a lot fewer younger people going into the scalloping. Trade is that is that true from your, based on your observation or are there? Yes, there's yeah. a lot fewer younger guys going in um, because on land, if it's a bad year on land, you can make pretty much just as much money. Um, and the old theory that uh, you know you have to spend six hours on the bench mm -hmm. after you catch your, your parents catch their scallops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mean as an apprentice? Right. Opening, well, opening. yeah, as an apprentice or a youngster. Opening, That's, well, in effect, an apprentice to your parents. Yes, exactly. Opening the scallops. And you don't think that happens as much anymore? No, I think guys are shying away from that. In mm. fact, there seems to be a shortage of shuckers as well now mm. because less young people getting involved in it. Um, Other sources of income. Yep. For yep. people. Uh, so is there a future for the scalloping industry here? I think there is. I think there is. There, uh, well, Ron Shepard says it's an irresponsible way to make a living, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if we can keep the, uh, keep the propagation things going, keep the crop relatively strong, I think you'll see some people come back to the industry. Mm -hmm. That's my hope anyway. Um, because it is the last viable uh, natural bay scallop fishery on the East Coast. In the world, basically, isn't it? I think in the world, yeah. Uh, uh, I've said that to people, I hope I'm right. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I mean, that's what the Shellfish Association was assuming. Yeah. When the other towns don't have a crop, uh, we seem to be able to carry through mm. and uh, and hopefully some of the things that we're doing in terms of water quality uh, for the sewers and so forth, at least at the margins, will help. Yeah. I mean, we can't do anything about rising water temperatures, and we can't do anything about ocean acidification, which we were just talking about with mm -hmm. Representative Fernandez. But uh, uh, there are some things we can do at the margins, and that's... We can we certainly reduce the nutrient loading, mm -hmm. which is important. I was just reading something this morning about why that whole um, eutrophication process starts and the algae bloom comes because there's food uh, for the algae to eat. Mm -hmm. And usually they eat the um, nitrogen-based uh, uh, pollutants. Yeah. <laughs> pollutants, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, how did you get into scalloping? What, what drew you to it? Well, I was uh, seasonally working as a chef out here. And then I'd go down to Florida and do that. Um, mostly seafood chef. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I decided I wanted to stay for the winters and um, I went out sea scalloping a couple times with uh, Charlie Sales boats. Um, and then came in and said, well, I, sh I was serving the base scallop, so I thought I might try and catch a few. I went out there and just started with a little skiff and four dredges and 
kind of got to know a little bit how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, kind of stayed off by myself because I didn't want to interfere with the local crew. And uh, then I just uh, started building up to, uh, you know, a better commercial boat and uh, the gear to haul it with. Uh, but I had my first year I was hand hauling uh, for the whole season. Mm. And then I had... Uh, you got a donkey eventually? I got a donkey eventually, but <laughs> <laughs> it was tough the first year. But Shirley Cabral made me open every scallop I caught that first year, mm. which was a good thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't get great weight, but that got me started. And then over the years, I've changed boats and had some fun with it and got involved with the, uh, the actual biology of it. Mm -hmm. I did a little time with Tara down at the hatchery, and uh, I'm happy to see that, you know, we have somebody working toward keeping this thing thriving. Um, you know, there's a picture of you down in the down at Stubby's on Straight Wharf. Yeah. I mean, on Steamboat Wharf. How did you, how did that come to be? Well, I had a friend that had a restaurant group in uh, Washington D.C. who was in love with Nantucket and the scallops. Mm -hmm. And um, they asked me one year if I'd do an advertisement. I think they bought, believe it or not, 10,000 pounds of scallops there uh, that year. And we mixed it up with all the different fishermen mm -hmm. I knew. Uh, froze them up and set them down. And, uh, oh, well, they came and did a photo shoot mm -hmm. with that picture at Stubby's. And they put them in the subways down in uh, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crazy. Sorry, but <laughs> you were sort of like a wanted poster. <laughs> yes. Well, it, it 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 was an interesting poster because basically they were telling the people that the scallops were frozen, but they said even if it means that I got frozen first, they were still selling Nantucket scallops, and they they went right through them. Um, but they don't do it anymore. Well, I think they're back in this year, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure. How, how deep, They're, they have a different price point than most restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, and the, so. the price is obviously is a sensitive issue for the restaurants. And, yeah. and um, even more than it is for the individual purchasers, I think. Mm -hmm. um, how, from, the, from the fisherman's standpoint, how is the price this year compared to last year when there weren't as many scallops? Is it? Price is pretty weak this year. And apparently uh, it's being caused by uh, uh, multiple places having scallops mm -hmm. for the first time in a while, which I guess you mean other communities, other communities, which I think makes sense because we have a real, we had a real abundance of seed last year, mm -hmm. so maybe the other areas um, also had that abundance of seed. Whether uh, what, what, can you name a couple of the other areas that? Well, are? I was recently been told Peconic Bay in New York, Island, yeah. yeah. Um, has got a fairly and good they've been working crop. very hard to restore that fishery. Yep, they've been trying hard, and uh, but it comes and it goes there. Yeah. Some years they'll have nothing, mm -hmm. and then some years they'll have uh, a bulk crop. Um, and I'm told that Westport has some over on the, uh, you know, off no. the Cape there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what Cape Cod actually has, and I think the vineyard has a, a decent. decent crop, mm -hmm. yeah. So that all affects the price, which in turn increases the amount of restaurants that can actually afford to sell them mm -hmm. without, um, you know. Uh, Throwing everything out of whack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But last year was good. It, was, yeah. it averaged about 19, 20 bucks for most of the season mm -hmm. because there were none anywhere except for here. And we were lucky enough to take ours and get the high market for them. If somebody were to come and ask you if they should become a scholar, what would you tell them? Well, I would say yes. It's a good thing to do, um, but don't bank on it. Neil Cocker, thank you so much. You're welcome, Dan.